If you are ready to receive the word of God, I want you to join me as I invite the servant of God. Who is coming with the red hot gospel? Evangelist, Hallelujah. People of Wagadugu. Amen. 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 I tell you, I am having such a wonderful time here in Burkina Faso. There's no other place in the whole world that I would rather be than right here, right now. Jesus is here. His power is here. He is with us tonight. Say amen. I want to tell you something about myself. Even though I look very young, I'm actually married with three children and one on the way. I don't want to offend I don't want to offend any of the ladies here but I think my wife is the most beautiful woman in the whole world and right now she is very has a very big stomach because she's nine months pregnant. I keep waiting to get a call on my mobile phone to hear that she's having a baby. And when it comes, it's going to be a brand new baby girl. I think when she's born, maybe I should name her Wagadugu. Before I left home, my wife said to me, you can't go. She said, you, you need to be here when I have this baby. I need you here. But I said, I have to go to Burkina Faso. Because this week, not just one baby is going to be born. But hundreds of thousands of new people will be born into the family of God. I believe that God is going to do a new thing here like he's never done before. This week is going to be like a rebirthing in Burkina Faso. Amen. 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 Let me tell you what is going to happen tomorrow night. Everybody say tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, something is going to happen on this field that you've never seen before. Wow. I love you so much. You are wonderful people. Tomorrow night you will see something you've never seen before. 
Tomorrow night, I'm going to pray for you to receive the baptism into the Holy Spirit. And right here on this field, the Holy Spirit is going to descend in mighty power. And if you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in other tongues. You are going to receive gifts of the Holy Spirit. Gifts of prophecy. Gifts of healing, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, interpretation of tongues, working of miracles. Every kind of gift is going to be dispersed. Tomorrow night, Jesus is tomorrow night, and Jesus will heal them. Amen. Amen. Now let me tell you about what's going to happen right here now, now, now tonight. I'm going to preach about the blood of Jesus Christ. And then we are going to burn Radishes and talismans and juju and charms and idols. We are going to burn these things and then I'm going to begin to break all of the curses in the name of Jesus. I believe that every curse over your life and over your family and over your finances and over your home will be broken in Jesus name. I'm also going to pray that the curse of poverty will be broken. You know, I have seen that poverty sometimes is more painful than sickness. Jesus has compassion with the sick, he also has compassion with the poor. Tonight I will pray that every curse over your life be broken in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to hear the word of God today? Are you ready? I'm going to be reading tonight from the book of First Peter, chapter 1. First Peter, chapter 1, verse 18. First Peter, chapter 1, verse 18. As you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, Received from vain conversation by tradition from your fathers. But you were redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Amen. Amina. Tonight I want to talk to you about the power that is in the blood of Jesus. How many of you know tonight that there is power in the blood of Jesus? Amen. Amina. When I was a little boy, we used to sing a song. It went like this. There is power. Power. Wonder working power. In the blood of the Lamb. 
Do you know that song? Yeah. Where's, where's the worship team? Can we sing that song tonight? Yeah. Let's see there is power in the blood. Can you just put your hands together for this worship team? We appreciate them so much. I want you to look here at what Peter says. He compares the blood of Jesus to silver and gold. Now, let me explain this to you very carefully. There are, there are two kinds of substances in this world. There are precious substances. And there are also corruptible substance. Let me give you an example of a corruptible substance. Blood is a very, very corruptible substance. If I were to cut my finger and a drop of blood fell down into this dirt. From the moment that it came out of my body, it would be totally useless. As soon as it hit the dirt, it would already begin to break down and decay. Blood is a corruptible substance. Now let me give you an example of a precious substance. Gold is a precious substance. If I take a bar of gold and I bury it in the dirt, I can come back and dig it up 10,000 years later and it will be the same as the day I buried it. That's why we say that gold is a precious substance. But here Peter, when he's speaking about the blood of Jesus, he turns it the other way around. Peter says that compared to the blood of Jesus, gold and silver are the corruptible substances. Because the blood of Jesus is so precious. Amen. Amen. It's more precious than silver. It's more precious than gold. It's the most precious thing in the world. Say amen. I would like to give you 
for 